Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I really wanted to show you my favorite brushes and tools. Some new, some old, some are really old faithful I've had for years, you may be able to tell by looking at them. But regardless, these are tools that I love and live by. And if you wanna see all the brushes and tools that I love, then keep watching. Hi guys. All right, so we're back with another video, but this tutorial is gonna be a little different. I mean, if you've been watching my channel or any of my videos thus far, you know that I love my products and I spend a lot of money on my products because I love them and I love reviewing them. But more than I think the actual product, I have an obsession with brushes and tools. Like what I use to apply my makeup, th those items are so important to me and I cherish them so, 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 so much. So I wanted to just talk about some of my favorite brushes and tools today. Um, I wanted to kind of break this video up because I own a ton of brushes. Like as I look at my table, I'm just like, yeah, I kind of go crazy with the brushes. But that's because, you know, different brushes have different meanings and I use them for different occasions. But I'm gonna have to split this video up some because I really go crazy with the eye brushes and I definitely don't have time to go through face and eye today. So we'll save eye brushes for another video. And we're gonna talk about like my favorite complexion brushes and what I use to apply uh, majority of my face. So yeah, let's get started. I would say aside from my brushes, I have tools that lay out in front of me on this um, table that I, I guess I kind of forget that I need because I use them and, and it's almost like I, um, I forget how much I depend on them, but they're just as important as the brush. So the first one I wanna talk about is my metal palette. And you can see my light in this, sorry. But my metal palette, I love it so much because it is what I work off of. I put product on the palette and I work off of the palette. I used to work on the back of my hand, but you know, that's really not uh, sanitary, even though I don't take clients anymore. I've learned to use a palette because this one in particular, a stainless steel palette, does not harbor bacteria. I used to use a plastic palette, but I got rid of that. So now I love to use my stainless steel tools as much as possible to keep down any germs. Uh, I clean my tools very well, and I'm, I, the, the brush cleaning video will have to be separate as well because I'm very particular about how I clean. But I would say the palette is definitely um, a must have. It's something that you should pick up and practice working off of. Um, and it actually helps me clean up a lot faster as well because I just spray this down with alcohol, wipe it off and good to go. I would say next after the palette or maybe even before the palette, the most important tool that I have in front of me is my mirror. And this one is a magnifying mirror. I can see every pore, every hair, every lash, every mistake. I mean, you could see everything in this mirror, but it also has this beautiful ring light that you can adjust from the back. Look how angelic that is. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Money well spent because this thing was not cheap. So this mirror I love because of this ring light that's attached to it. It um, has a sensor, this little black area here. So this light comes on as you get close to the mirror and then the light will dim off once you're away from the mirror. So it's kind of like powered on and off by itself. But I will say I'm very particular about my lighting. Even in my bathroom before my YouTube channel, I had particular lights. I, Because I studied film at my university, I understand how lighting can alter what you see. Um, so I enjoy lighting that mimics the sun and mimics natural light as much as possible. So I, I purchased specific lights in general. So this mirror, part of the reason why it's so expensive is because it has a true tone light system that mimics the sun. And it is very, very accurate. Just like the lighting I use in this room in my studio to film, um, they are the closest possible tone um, to the sun that you could purchase, that money could buy. Um, so I love this mirror because of that. This mirror has changed my application game for sure. Um, and they carry, uh, I would say several models of this mirror, but I bought this one because it will adjust its height very easily. Um, and I love the magnification. I think this one is five times magnified, but it is great. It's really great. And sometimes you'll see it in frame. I try to make sure it's out of frame 
because I really can just lean in and you could see everything. Like, I can see next week in this mirror, okay? I will say the disclaimer about this mirror is because you could see every flaw, every imperfection, you have to remind yourself to um, not become obsessive with the things you see that you did not see before. So just keep that in mind, okay? Because you can work on the flaws, you can, you can fix them, but you don't want to like go crazy. Like this mirror just helps you see more clearly, but like don't go crazy. And then I also have like, you know, my normal, I got this off Amazon, but this one is the dual side. So uh, normal mirror on one side, magnification on the other. I think this side, I think the magnified side of this mirror is 10 times. So I have a nice balance. I have my normal mirror and then I have the five time magnify and then I can flip over and do 10 times to really see. So this one was inexpensive, but I like the base as a sturdy base. Um, this mirror is made by Miravana. That's the brand I got it from Amazon, so I'll link it below. But between these two, and then I have hand mirrors, like this one is uh, from Morphe, so I got this from the Morphe store. And then I have a few other hand mirrors. You just gotta be able to see. So lighting and reflection are key, okay? So the first area of my face I typically work on first, or almost always my brows. Um, and I typically don't have to fill them in. Of course, they're microbladed and I typically just clean them up. And before I clean them up with concealer, I like to tweeze my brows. At this point in the game, I'm definitely not getting my brows waxed. I don't really know who's still getting their brows waxed. I think that's kind of played out. Um, and it actually tears up the skin. But threading is another option. I don't do that anymore just because I can clean them up fairly easily and just as good with these tweezers. So I will say my favorite tweezers at the moment would be the tweezers from MAC. Um, they're, I would say, more precise and more of a pointier slanted tip. So I use these second and then I use these first. This is the Tweezerman set. You know, Tweezerman are not a cheap brand, but these will last. Also stainless steel. So the Tweezerman tweezers, I feel like I go in with first and I've already tweezed my brows but I go in with these first and I really pull out the hair and I can move quickly with these these very rarely pinch the skin or grab too much hair at once I've just gotten to the point where I just hold the skin and I just go to town and then when you have the hairs that are still short and this almost like just this little peak of root hair sticking out that's when I go in with the MAC tweezers the MAC tweezers are like nothing to play with you want to be you want to move slow you want to be like close to the hair because these will pinch your skin if you don't know what you're doing also use um these little brow scissors to trim the hair i think these are actually made by japanesque if i'm not mistaken and then i also use my little facial blade i think this is also made by japanesque but you can get these like at the beauty supply store or sally's walmart target like for a dollar and I just use these to clean up on the brow. I actually use these to clean up on the face. Don't judge me. I am hairy. My family is hairy. It is what it is. And I also get laser hair removal, but this machine's down right now. So we gotta do what we gotta do. So I use my little, you know, clean up razor. Real easy to use. And I would say between the tweezers, the little mini uh, brow scissors and the razor, you're good to go. Also for the brows, I use the spoolie. I have three by three different brands. It's a little OD, but I would say my favorite, one is from Sigma, one is from MAC, one is from Morphe. I love to go in with this Morphe spoolie. It is called the Morphe M115. It is my favorite of the three that I own. I own one from MAC, one from Sigma, but the Morphe one is definitely my favorite because it's the softest and it's also the most inexpensive. So how funny is that? But I also use this to brush the lashes sometimes. This The spoolie is just a must have for me. So I'm gonna just do my brows really quickly. So I'm gonna take my spoolie and brush them up. Sometimes I use concealer, sometimes I use foundation, but today I'm gonna use concealer. I'll use two different brush styles to clean up with the concealer. I'll either use an angle brush. This one's from MAC, it's the MAC 226. And this is a standard angle brush but I love this one specifically because it has a tapered tip it doesn't have a real blunt tip where the hairs are cut like sharp or also love this Morphe M421 this is this kind of like mini concealer brush 
um, synthetic hair, great for cream products. And this is also a tapered tip to where the tip um, actually smooths out to be very, very fine. So I find brushes like these two very easy to clean up um, the brow with or do precision cream work with. And I never really do my brows on this channel because I feel like it's so repetitive. It's like, blah, we've seen that before. Nothing special. So right now I'm using the MAC brush. I'm just gonna clean it up. And then I'll go on with this Japanese 712 brush. Oh my God, I think it's like precision baking or something, but 712 is the number. You can snatch this up so many random places. I think I found this at TJ Maxx, like on the Humble. You can get this at Walgreens, Walmart. Please buy this brush or something similar. It is this, I'm assuming, I, I would call this dual fiber. Yeah, dual fiber, synthetic hair. It's just amazing, it's amazing. It has this round fluffy tip, but then it's cut at an angle that's just perfect for blending, like perfect. So I'll buff out my concealer with this brush and um, my eyeshadow primer. So then on the other eye, I'm just gonna use my Morphe M421 brush. Same thing, just clean it up. All right, so brows are done. Let me just apply a primer really quickly. So I've applied primer, but I need to prime my smile lines because I got a long night ahead of me. So bear with me as I secure the smile. I'm getting real cat vibes with this. Don't worry. So for my base, I love to use a foundation brush and beauty blenders, of course. Like I love my beauty blenders. They are amazing for applying and blending after you've applied something. Like from cream products to powder products, I use the Beauty Blender, a damped Beauty Blender, to press in and blend all of my products throughout my application, even though I don't always show that uh, in my videos. So I have several. <laughs> so I kind of rotate between the four. One's for powder, one is for foundation, one concealer, and one for contour, bronze sometimes. Or sometimes I use one for all three when I'm really trying to mesh the colors together. So it all depends. But I'm going to use my foundation beauty blender to apply this elixir to my skin. This kind of glow, it's really not an elixir, but my pre-foundation glow. So I would say the foundation brush to me is very important. I love to use the Beauty Blender, but I love to use the foundation brush first most of the time, especially with foundations that are more uh, liquidy or watery because the blender will soak it right up. And then also the blender, as great of a job it does blending, it also picks up makeup as you continue to pounce. So you have to be careful with the blenders. You have to kind of know when to stop blending or pouncing, whatever the case may be. The first one I adore is the Morphe E44. This brush is extremely soft and fairly inexpensive. I also love the Sigma F82, and all of these are pretty much round tips. I don't like the flat top brushes. I feel like they're uncomfortable. I love the MAC 170 OG foundation brush. Been around for years. This one is, um, I think, probably the most dense of them that I love but great application. This Sigma F47 is a recent purchase. The hairs are super soft. I love the angle of the brush, the way that the hairs are cut. All of these brushes are super dense, but I will say that um, the hairs being soft make it a more comfortable use or a comfortable application. I'm gonna take the Morphe E44 and I'm gonna use this to apply my foundation. That's real southern. So you know how I do, I start with my darker foundation first. And I pounce that where I need it so that my face doesn't turn gray. Then I'm going in with my lighter color. And blend that right on out. Then I'm gonna take my Beauty Blender and dip into the remaining of the foundation and press it into the skin and I'm lightly dipping it into the foundation just so I don't remove product. 
and this just assures that everything is blended in and not sitting so much on top of the face. And I'm gonna apply a little concealer just for a little more coverage where I need it. But this is a darker concealer, one close to my skin tone. And I'm just using it to spot conceal. Going in with the same beauty blender. So next I'm gonna go in to conceal. And I'm gonna apply the concealer on the face. And I almost always use, unless my concealer is in a pot, like my, the Kevin Aquan uh, Sensual Skin Enhancer, I'll use a concealer brush with that product. But most of the time I'm using concealer that comes with a doe foot applicator. And because all of these products are personal, I just apply the concealer, let it dry down, and then I blend it out. So I'm gonna let the concealer dry down using my fan by Patrick Ta. Shout out to Patrick Ta, because he makes some cute stuff. All right, so then I'm gonna take another beauty blender. You don't have to have separate beauty blenders. I'm extra, don't mind me. And I'm just gonna blend this out, obviously using the smaller, pointier tip. So then to contour, there's only one brush I'm obsessed with, and that is the Morphe E8. I have several at this point. This brush is amazing. I went to the Morphe store a while ago and they tried to sell me this brush and I was like, what, what, what's so great about it? And all she kept saying was, I watched a Morphe artist use this brush for the entire face, for all the cream products, for foundation, concealer, contour. And I was just looking at her like, you yeah, know, I can tell that's not big enough for my foundation. But now that I use it to contour, I really could use this brush. It would take a little longer, but it reminds me of the foundation brush that I used by Morphe. It's just smaller. The bristles are the same hair. They are, it seems like it's a similar um, density, just obviously on a smaller scale. This brush is amazing. So I love to take this brush and dip it right into the contour and then blend it out and then finish with a beauty blender. So that's what I will do today. And this brush is um, very, it's densely packed, but because the bristles are looser, it gives you a lighter application. Um, because sometimes when you go in to contour after foundation, you end up picking up foundation or removing foundation. And that's what we don't want to do. We want, we want this to actually be you know, layering, and this brush makes it super easy. So I'm essentially layering the product and then I'll blend it in. And I love to go on the hairline some with this, even though I have a little small forehead. Then I'll go in, I'm just gonna actually take the Foundation Beauty Blender and just blend it in. So for the nose contour, I switch it up. I use some blending eyeshadow style brushes and then I also use like some shader shadow uh, brushes. But I don't necessarily have one that I'm obsessed with yet. I always use my beauty blender on my nose contour. But as far as the brushes that I use right now, I'm loving the Morphe M210, the Morphe M522, and then I've been using um, a blending brush so this one is a Sigma E44. It's a firmer blending brush. So I've been using it to kind of help push the cream product around so that I don't have streaks or lines essentially. So I'm gonna go into the contour color. I'm just gonna lay the product first. I'll also dip back into my concealer to establish that highlight. So for the contour, I used the M420. Now I'm using the M522, both Morphe. And I'm just gonna carve out, or, you know, outline the contour. And I also like to let this product dry down a bit before I blend it out. So now I'm gonna go on with my blending brush. I think, I feel like any eyeshadow blending brush will work, but I like to use this uh, Sigma, it's called Firm Blender E44. And I like to kind of 
mesh the two colors together. And before I go in with any powder products, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my eyeshadow base using that same Japanese brush from earlier, the Japanese 712. And I'm just gonna dip right into that base and apply it in the crease, blending it into, or blending it toward the brow bone, and then I'll blend it on the lid. And another special tool I wanna to include in this video is my little lash guard that I use to hold down my lash extensions so that I can apply product without, you know, rubbing up against them. And it just holds it out the way. And I use this all the time for shadow and liner, of course. Yep, so shout out to this little baby. And of course, before I go in with powder, I'm gonna use that Beauty Blender again and just make sure all the creases are smoothed out. So, you know, the Beauty Blender has been around for a long time and there are also off brands that make a very similar sponge. And I've purchased those and used them as well and I was never upset with them, but I enjoy the Beauty Blender because I feel like they just last a very long time. If you clean them carefully without puncturing or creating holes and thoroughly without, uh, you know, you don't want any bacteria to harbor in the sponge, this blender could last you. So they are, you know, the name brand ones are not cheap, but I don't buy them that often. And I use them often, but that's because I, you know, thoroughly clean them and take care of them. Thoroughly clean them. So when setting the under eye with powder, there are two brush styles that I love. So there's like this small round, a teardrop-ish shape tapered brush and then there are the more flat round brush styles so these two are the morphe m448 and then this is the morphe y11 so i love this style for under eye powder and then also the sephora pro 99 and the morphe e49 very similar uh, brushes so I love these because they're densely packed uh, but they also are small enough to really press powder into small areas so I'm gonna take my um, setting powder and just press it and I have a lot of face powder brushes but I find myself grabbing one of these two the most this is the Sephora 50 this large just fluffy dense but just you know fluffy brush and then I also love this brush here from Morphe it is the M527 similar concept um, but this is I believe I think a goat hair brush uh, very soft but I think this brush here um, application wise Mm, they're similar. I'll say that. Um, so I go for like a loosely packed brush. And sometimes when I really want to press the powder into the skin, I'll pick up this more PE52. It's a lot more dense, still very soft bristles, but it's going to pick up way more product than something like this. So I'm going to take my uh, all over setting powder and I'm just going to pat it into the skin. So for bronzer, I love several brushes. Um, typically, I'll pick up a larger tapered uh, teardrop style brush, similar to what I showed you before for the under eye powder, or I'll do this tulip shaped um, brush style. So the first two I showed you, this is the blush brush from Real Techniques, OG. Everybody has had the Real Technique brushes and I've gotten rid of all of them but this one. Like, I love the way this brush applies bronzer and blush, love it. And this is the Morphe Y3, the Mama to the Y11. But the Y3, of course, is of the brush I would use for bronzer. And then with the tulip shape brushes, this is the MAC 138, a beautiful, beautiful application. Um, even with powder contouring, this really just, these brushes just fit into any hollow area naturally without forcing it or having to sculpt. And this is the Japanesque brush. Um, 
So the Japanesque brush is very loosely packed. So the bristles create the softest application ever. So if you're using like a super pigmented uh, bronzer or even blush, this is definitely something you wanna grab. So the bronzer that I'm using today is more of a sheer um, bronzer. It has like a shift to it. So I'm gonna use the MAC 138, this tulip shape brush. And I'm gonna pat it first and then For my loose powder application and baking, I always use a beauty blender. Um, if I'm doing a light baking, I'll use, you know, like a very small brush. Like this is the Sephora 79. So something to just kind of sweep across the face. But I love my beauty blenders. So I'll use these to apply the loose powder. And then I'll use a um, smaller brush to sweep away the powder. So sweeping away the bake, I'm just taking previously used brush, something small that can get under the eye. And then I'm gonna use my powder brush. All right, so I'm gonna complete my eyes off camera and I'll come back to finish the face. So I completed my eyes off camera. Hello eyes. Shout out to Hindash on YouTube for uh, inspiring this look. I love watching his tutorials. I'm gonna go in with this Morphe M448 brush and I'm gonna use this to dip into a little bit of a highlighting powder and dust it under my eye. And this isn't really like highlighting, but you know, a little glow. I'm gonna also use this to dust away the bake that's left on my nose. So to reinforce the contour on my nose, I like to go over it with a powdered contour color. This is another blending brush that I will use for eyeshadow, the Morphe M453. Mm -hmm. I like this one because it's a dual fiber brush, so it's gonna pick up a little less product. So I'm gonna take that powdered color and I'm just going to use this to kind of blend the contour shade. So for a blush, I love applying it toward the end of the makeup application because depending on how much I have going on already as far as colors and tones, sometimes you just want the blush to be very subtle and I have a perfect brush for that. And well, two to be exact. These two brushes are from Smashbox. There's the Sheer Powder Brush, very unique brush, and also the Buildable Cheek Brush. And one is bigger than the other, very similar cut and style, almost identical. But the way that this brush is made, super loosely packed, as you can see. Like this brush is bending, it's folding, it shakes, it dances. That means your application is gonna be sheer. And a lot of the blush that we buy, the powder blush, they're packed with color. Like they are pigmented, they are meant to be seen. And this is gonna make sure it's seen, but it's not like screaming at us. I typically like all my brushes to be uniform, like, you know, silver ferrule, black handle, but these brushes are bombs, so I don't mind them sticking out with my collection. And I just kind of tap the blush on, and then I'll blend it in. Perfect application. Mm -hmm. You can also use this brush for bronzer, so I'm gonna just apply a little more bronzer on top and we'll be good to go. And then going back to my favorite tool, the Beauty Blender, I'm just pressing everything into the skin. So this is the final look. Um, I hope you enjoyed me ramble on and on about my favorite tools. Like these are things that I live by, swear by. These are tools, some I've been using for years, brands that I have used since the beginning of my career. But with that being said, let me know what your favorite brush is. Let me know what I should try next. Let me know what I should film next. Do you wanna see this eye tutorial? Cause I can always refilm it. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Peace. Brush, brush, we must increase our brush. Mm, 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 mm.